Dance is difficult to most people, but most don't see the significance of dance. It's more than just movement. Some are classically trained, but today we venture into the lives of some of Milwaukee's finest. Some may even say they are hidden treasures. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's where I was raised. And I currently stay in Tucson, Arizona, pursuing my career as a professional dancer. I'm from Rockford, Illinois, and I'm studying exercise physiology at Marquette University, and I have a passion for dance. So I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I currently attend UCLA. I am studying choreography, and I graduate with my master's in June. I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, right at St. Luke's Hospital on the south side. Um, and I was been here forever, <laughs> for 20, 28 years. Coming from the inner city of Milwaukee, my background, I have to work two times as hard to pursue my dream, and that gives me the drive to keep going, to even be on the level as others I see. I face many more obstacles and challenges as opposed to many dancers I've came across. So that's what keeps me going, to be great, to be one of the greats. The funny thing is that I didn't even want to apply to Marquette. My dad told me to apply 30 minutes, literally 30 minutes before the deadline. Um, and so somehow I got here and I'm a huge uh, believer in everything happens for a reason. And so I feel like my dad telling me to apply to Marquette literally 30 minutes before the deadline, um, leading me here, uh, helped me to find, actually for the dance community in Milwaukee to find me in a sense. Um, and I honestly think that that was kind of meant to be because I wasn't even thinking about coming to Milwaukee at all. If anything, I didn't want to go to Marquette at all, but somehow I'm here and I'm just thriving in this, in this dance community and meeting new people and really discovering who I am, discovering what I'm really passionate about, discovering what dance truly means to me. And without this community, I wouldn't have really um, a space to understand that aspect of dance, the more deeper side of things. And so, um, yeah, my dad, that's really the only reason that I'm here. But shout out to dad. I got into dance um, around nine years old um, at my church. I was going to New Testament church and it was more praise dance. My friends at the church was doing it. so. Um, I just wanted to do it. Like it, it was something new, something that I never really seen before at the time. So I just thought it was super cool, wanted to get into it. And since nine, I just kind of tried to develop and find different ways and different styles of dance and just kind of fell in love with it. So I started dancing when I was five years old, but my mother said that I have been dancing since before I could walk. <laughs> so she enrolled me into a dance class when I was five years old, and I've been dancing ever since. I started out break dancing. Um, because everybody starts out breakdancing because it's the cool thing to do. You want to be the cool kid that can do some cool stuff and then everybody's like, oh snap, I want to be friends with that guy. So I started breakdancing first uh, to get attention, <laughs> as cocky as that sounds. But as time progressed, I, it, dance became more of a, a voice to me. It became something not so focused on showing off what I can do, but rather showing off what I am in a sense. So after break dancing, um, I came into high school and in high school we had a arts program and 
the dance um, part of the arts program was heavily focused around kind of the traditional uh, ideas of dance like ballet, contemporary, all that kind of trained, I guess, beliefs on dance. And so I'm thinking like, I'm a break dancer, not trained at all. I wouldn't be able to get into this. And so when I auditioned, my dance teacher at the time um, auditioning me saw not really the moves, but the creativity and, and the passion on the inside. And So I, I would say dance is a way to, to um, get my emotions across. It's one of my main ways I express my emotions um, because I feel like nonverbals take up 90% of how you feel anywhere. It, it, it's like 90% of your communication. So dance is like the same way to me. Like it's 90% of how I communicate to the world by if I'm sad or if I'm happy or if I'm having a bad day or I'm angry. It, it just always shows up in dance and in different styles. I moved to Arizona for better opportunities. Like dancing here, I couldn't afford classes growing up, so I got a late start on it. And then after a while, I started working and focused on paying bills and put my dreams to the side. And one day at work, a guest came in and was like, hey, what are you doing? Are you in school? I tell her no. You talk for a while. I was mentioning not being able to afford classes, and she wrote me a check and told me that God had sent her to me. I'm supposed to be dancing. And a couple weeks after that, I went to a Nicki Minaj concert, and Tanache was one of her acts, opening acts. And as I watched the dancers, I just thought to myself, like, this could be me. Like, I could be up there dancing, but I knew I had to isolate myself and get to a place that offered more for me. And California was too expensive at the time, so I ended up in Arizona. I dropped everything, I prayed, God gave me the okay, and I left. <laughs> I created By J. Sharon because I have been working in communities for over 10 years teaching dance at boys and girls clubs, at local dance studios, and now I'm in Compton and Watts also teaching dance. And I wanted to create a, a program or a company that like house my creative projects. So um, in By J. Sharon we have the gym project was the, which is an initiative for young girls ages 11 through 18 where they come and they learn um, dance visual art and film and video and then we also pair it with mental health conversations to kind of um, use dance as activism and social change i also have a curriculum that i am working on through by jay sharon as well as all of my dance films and live performances uh, I was able to learn different technique like ballet, contemporary, modern, some tap, um, more hip hop, like when I say hip hop, um, like lines and shapes and all that stuff. So that's kind of how I got into other styles. I've never really been trained from anywhere. Like people always ask me like, oh, like how many years have you been dancing? And it's, it's always a weird question to me because, you know, I can say that I've been studio trained for X amount of years, but I haven't been studio trained for X amount of years, you know? So I don't really know like what that means. But as for styles of dance, um, I've always learned through watching. If you really look at dance, dance is very physical, but it's also very emotional. But for the physical side, watching, like truly watching how people move and truly observing how technique works, how lines work, how, how dance works physically, um, if you really just pay attention to that and really be present, which is what I was for the four years in the dance program, I was very present. I was surrounded by people that had the studio training, had the technique, had the things that I wanted. Um, so I really just watched them and I was able to kind of imagine myself doing it. I was excited. I think a lot of people expected me to be nervous, but 
I wanted it so bad, my ambition just took control. I didn't see what could go wrong. All I could see is what could go right. So at first it was kind of hard leaving Milwaukee, leaving without a car, anything, sleeping on my floor, but I know I wanted to dance. So it was worth the struggle to get where I needed to be, or at least where I wanted to be. And I feel good. Like I feel like there's no distractions, nothing really holding me back. I'm already a social person. So I talk a lot. I met a lot of great friends. Before I went to Arizona, I only did jazz contempor and contemporary dance. And I come from hip hop. I got into ballet, fam, hills, started doing shows. It's amazing. I love it. I do believe dance is a hidden treasure in the Milwaukee area, of, um, followed by basically all the other arts, music, uh, art in general, painting, rappers. I think art in general is like the hidden treasure in Milwaukee. Um, I feel like Milwaukee, we don't really highlight the arts here as in other states. Like you'll, even other cities, you'll go to Chicago and it's like, you can't miss something or you're, you're in New York and it's something going on all the time, some type of show, some type of you know performance. So in Milwaukee, it's not as grand. So I, I do think it is a hidden treasure. It's, it's something that you have to really look for. <laughs> and when you find it, it's just, it's amazing. I miss Milwaukee. I miss, of course, like my family. But at the same time, um, being in LA has taught me survival skills for one because <laughs> it's so big and everything is so spread out like I'm used to being in Milwaukee getting everywhere in 15 minutes um, in LA that is never the case um, something close is 30 minutes away so just getting used to like just geographically the difference and then also um, learning the culture of the city has been challenging but I think that after three years I'm starting to get a hang of it my dance journey has been kind of up and down. Um, like I said, I started when I was nine. I was in the church, and I kind of just grew from there. I joined Signature Dance Company, and I tried to um, really learn more technical things there. With you know, get my tech, be on my technique in dance, um, and then from there, I just went into choreography, um, which was a way for me to express my self more, express what I want to see, and express the art and the movement in my head. From there, I do have um, a brand, you should say, or I should say, um, it's called Shalom Unique, which is my real name. And um, right now, I'm in the works of trying to get, um, not like necessarily a group, but more like an artistic dance company out. It's called Lemon Tree Artistic Development. Um, and I want it to be more so towards people who, dancers who just want to do something. Okay, so before I left, I was doing research on dance groups in Arizona and who had the best reviews and videos. And I emailed the owner and he told me like, hey, come stop by. I just asked about joining the group, not even just taking classes. And he was like, you can drop by first. So when I came, I got in touch with him again and I went to an open house and they let me know, you know, what to expect being part of a group. I've never been a part of a dance group older, only when I, like in my childhood, in middle school. It's a great feeling for other people to be as passionate as you are with you and they're very encouraging and motivating. And even outside, we stay in contact, like they're my family right now, so. Dance is my everything. <laughs> it's how I communicate. It's how I make a living. Um, dance, I feel like it's a, the gift that God gave me. It's my calling. And every time that I am dancing, I am doing the work that I'm called to do. Just go out and just put yourself out there. Um, especially with so much social media, it's not hard at all to pursue any part of your dream or if not your dream in total. Um, I think the world now is more open to a lot of the arts. So just putting a video up, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever, it is nothing. I think the biggest thing people have to press past is their self. So recently, around senior year, high school, come freshman year, I realized that I had this YouTube channel with like a decent amount of subscribers. 
and I understood that it was a platform where I could showcase my content, showcase dance and what dance means to me and showcase my passion and showcase the fun that I have for dance, showcase my choreography and how I move. And so with YouTube, um, it really pushed me to start making more videos with people. Um, so basically, I would just uh, pick a song. It's kind of like a business. I would, hit, I would look at the trending and I would look at the songs that were popping off because obviously if a song's not popping off, nobody's gonna search for that video. So I would look for the trending ones, I'd pick the song, I'd either freestyle or choreograph something and then I would just hit up my friends um, and then we would shoot a video just real quick. I'd edit a little bit and put it on YouTube. And it's funny because at first, when I first got here to Milwaukee, it was just me. And so I was really just putting out the content for myself, like showing off me in a sense, like this is Jasper Sanchez, this is the choreography that he does, this is what you understand as Jasper Sanchez. But as I did more and more of that, then I was able to build connections in Milwaukee because people saw that, they saw me, and they decided to invest in who I was and be a part of, I guess, my world. So through that, I was able to meet a bunch of different people um, that wanted to be in the videos and that were down. So I just kept building and building and building and meeting new people. Um, and so I just built a base of connections for me to you know, pick people to be in my videos and have people be down to be in my videos, I guess. Um, and now, like, at this point, it's not really about me, kind of. It kind of is, but it kind of isn't because it's also like the bros and, and the friends and the people, the connections that I made. Like, I like YouTube because, one, I can put out who I am um, to an audience, like, around the world, super accessible to anybody. Um, two, um, I can watch myself grow. I can go back into a video literally one year ago and go back to one today and then just see how I've grown in a community or as myself or as a dancer. And so it's kind of like I'm logging my life, I'm logging my growth, while at the same time um, it's letting me like get to new opportunities. Uh, I wanted to give an opportunity to women of color choreographers to have a chance to showcase their work in front of an audience. Um, and at the same time to receive feedback from mentors who are currently working choreographers. And um, so Resort Dance for Festival also allows choreographers who have um, work that is tied in with social justice issues or activism. It allows them to have a place to kind of start the conversation with a group of people. If you really want to get into dance or get into anything and you're scared, um, just realize that you're doing it for yourself. So why should it matter what other people think about you when you can build yourself your own life? Because it's your life. I was afraid, but I didn't let that fear cripple me from actually making an attempt to do something. So not being afraid to fail, um, I think if you can persevere through the good, through the bad, and through fear, I think there's nothing that you can't accomplish. No matter where you come from, what's your background, who supports you or who don't support you, go for it. Anything is obtainable. You just have to work hard and never give up on your dreams. And that's my goal, to show the younger ones, you know. Once I get it, you can get it, you know. Just believe in yourself. That's all it takes is believing in yourself. Do what makes you happy. So you can pay for it. You don't know. You don't know what's gonna happen next. That could have been what's gonna get you to the top. So my biggest thing is just do it. Like don't think about it, don't overthink it. It's something that you're interested in. It's something that some people love to do. It's something that speaks to you in a way. So just do it. Just throw it out there. As you can see, dance is a rhythmic action. You can tell by hearing these stories and their passion becomes their movement and gives them their individual purpose for dance. This is their silent story. <laughs>